dummies. This is your foul pal Darrell speaking. And in this video, I am going to share with you some of my care tips on how to get rid of black mold on your Phalaenopsis orchid. So, stay tuned, foul pal. Some of the things that you would need when it comes to getting that black mold off of your Phalaenopsis orchid. Well, first of all, just to clarify, just to make sure that we are talking about the same thing, look, foul pals. You see all of this black deadness that was from another leaf? All of that has to come off because those fungus gnats will live for it. You see how the stem of it is black? It should not be black, foul pals. The natural color should be like a tannish color. It's okay if it's a little dark, but when you see all of this blackness, that's an indication that you have a mold outbreak. And a mold outbreak is going to prohibit this phalaenopsis in the production of any new root growth. As you know, the springtime is surely to come, and that's when most Phalaenopsis orchids begin to get into their um, vegetative state. So, some of the things that we need, I have a toothbrush right here. I have 3% hydrogen peroxide. I have a couple of pair of tweezers to get all the way in there and get all of that dead matter off. I, first of all, some of the care tips that I want to share with you is going to be first washing your hands with some antibacterial soap because the Phalaenopsis orchids are very sensitive when it comes to um, any kind of perfumes, lotions, hand sanitizers. That's something that is going to disturb them or disturb their pH level. So that's something that you don't want to do. Okay, foul pals? The that Changing the media, you might have some of the old media residue that's left on. That is why we need the toothbrush, foul pals, okay? But before I use the toothbrush, I am going to spray her with some hydrogen peroxide. I placed her in the water before this video as a precaution to help loosen up all of this old media. Okay? So as you can see, uh-oh, as you can see, foul pals, is fizzing. Okay, so I'm going to use my toothbrush. I'm going to dip it in this water and I'm going to gently start to try to wash away or brush away all of the old media foul pals. And you wanna take your time to do that, okay? Now foul pals, I'm not gonna sit here and be with y'all for no 20, 30 minute video, okay? This, this is not a repotting video, honey. This is not a repotting video. I'm showing you how to clean this mold. And I'm trying to be very careful, okay, foul pals? You don't want to damage the roots like my foul pal Todd said. Also, I'm able to see this dead root right here. This is going to be one of the roots that I want to cut off all the way, foul pals. And these shears have been cleaned with alcohol. This part is still hard, so I'm gonna just cut that little part like so. Sorry, blue, sorry, blue. And so those are the only roots that I really saw that was kinda bad. Can you see it, foul pals? Are you able to see what I'm seeing, foul pals? Stay with me, baby, stay with me. So yes, you just gonna have to get in here, honey. Get in here and, and go to work. Go to work. And I got the tweezers because you can see all of this dead matter, foul pals. This is what those fungus nets are. They feed off of all of this right here, baby. So I'm going to use these tweezers that I use specifically for this and pull all of that dead matter off. Okay, foul pals? So these are just some of the care tips that I think some people are skipping over when we do our repotting because... The, what's going to happen is those nets are going to come and start attacking all of this mess and then you're going to have an infestation. And like I said before, honey, orchids for dummies, honey, we do not do the bugs. So you want to just get your phalaenopsis as clean as she can because I'm putting her in something that I want her to successfully grow in at least for a year. So I just want to make sure she's on a good start. Another care tip is moving your orchids around. You want to make sure that you have the perfect place to place them before you start um, 
doing your repotting and um, buying new orchids. Make sure you have a place to place them before because I lost a few orchids from moving them around just way too much, pal pals. Just way too much. Okay? And as you can see, all of that old media has started to fizz. Um, I have some viewers that's trying to do water culture and they are finding that once they place their, I'm sorry, they're finding that once they place their roots um, in the water for, uh, for two days, they come back and the water has all kind of fuzzy material in it. That's because you didn't do this step right here, baby. Okay. And that's why we're doing it before we place it in the new media. Because just as how it does in water, it will do um, also in when you're changing your media. Now, I don't know if you can see or not, but Foul Pals, it is already starting to... Oh, Lord, it don't look better on the camera, honey. It don't look better on the camera, honey. But um, in real life, it is starting to line up a little bit, Foul Pals. Okay, so I'm not going to give you a 10 minute video. You kind of see what you have to do. This is a process that has to be repeated. Once I get finished getting all of this stuff off of the um, orchid or as much as I can, I'm going to leave her in, this, in some new fresh water, okay, for an hour. And then I'm going to let her dry out overnight before I place her into the new media fab pals. Also, you want to let the bark soak for 24 hours or however long that you can do because that's what my Auntie Carolyn says on Jacqueline Orchids. <laughs> but all right, fab pals, I thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I was able to solve your guys' problems. I want you to like, comment, and subscribe, honey. Don't forget to join my Facebook group called Foul Pals. I will leave that information in the description box below. But you guys have a great day. And until next time.